Guys, I'm just trying to have a little bit of fun like we do at school. All right, welcome to my kitchen. We are going to read today chapters 38 and beyond. See how far we get. Um, last time when you guys read, we were talking about um, how the garden has changed Roz's life. And a lot of you nailed it, right? The garden has made her life so much better because it's allowed her to have friends, to have a shelter, um, and to have people who care about her and are kind of helping support her raise in raising Brightville. Um, in addition, I asked you what you thought about Chit Chat, and a lot of you guys said that he would uh, that he'd be a really great friend for Brightville uh, because he's a lot of fun to talk to. So we'll see if their friendship remains. Judging by this chapter title, I think it will. Chapter 38, The New Friendship. Chit Chat wasn't speechless for long. She'd already been alive for a whole 12 and a half weeks. And she wanted to tell Brightville about every exciting thing and every boring thing that ever had happened to her. And so as the new friends played and explored and ate together, the squirrel shared her stories. I was born on the other side of the hill, and then last week I decided I was ready to build my very first home, which is what a squirrel's nest is. And now I live in the tree with the weird bump in its trunk, she said, while the two of them kicked pebbles into the pond. One time, a weasel chased me through the treetops until he missed a branch and fell all the way down and crashed into a bush and walked away all wobbly, and he never bothered me again, she said, while the two of them crawled through a hollow log. Ew, gross. I saw you eat that ant one time. I ate a nap by accident. I didn't like it at all. I mostly eat acorns and bark and tree buds and sometimes the yummy berries that grow in your garden, she said while the two of them took a snack break. But Chit Chat was a good, was as good a listener as she was a talker. And whenever it was Brightville's turn to speak, she would kept quiet and hang on to every word. Do you know who enjoyed their conversations the most? Our robot, Roz, the protective mother, was never far away, and she felt something like amusement at the silly conversations that she overheard, and she felt something like happiness that her son had made such a good friend. I'm sure some of you are thinking about your really good friends and the people you miss from school, so just take a second and think about all the things you really love about one of your friends, or multiple friends. Chapter 39, The First Flight. Brightville had spent his entire life by the pond, and he was becoming very curious about what lay beyond his neighborhood. So one day his mother said to him, let us go for a walk and I will show you more water than you can possibly imagine. Roz placed the gosling on her flat shoulder and the two of them set off across the island. They marched out of the forest, crossed the great meadow and climbed uphill until they were on top of the island's western ridge. Before them was a grassy slope that descended all the way to the dark, choppy waves that surrounded the island. That is a lot of water, said the wide-eyed gosling. I'm a good swimmer, but I'm not good enough to swim across that pond. That is not a pond, said the robot. That is an ocean. I doubt any bird could swim across an ocean. Waves rolled in from the horizon. Seagulls circled above the shore. A steady breeze blew up the slope. Brightville's yellow fluff had recently changed over to a coat of silky brown feathers, and he spread those wings in the breeze. And then, Mama, look! For the briefest of moments, the wind lifted Brightville off the ground, but he quickly tipped backwards and thumped into the soft grass. I was flying, he squeaked. That was not flying, said Roz, looking back at her upside-down son. Well, I was almost flying. I'm going to try again. I have observed many birds in flight, said Roz. Sometimes they flap their wings quickly, and other times they fly without flapping at all. They spread their wings and soar into the wind. So I was soaring, said Brightbill. Almost. There, look at the soaring seagull. It seems like she's not doing anything, but if you look closer, you will notice that she is making small adjustments with her wing and tail, with her wings and tail. I think you should try adjusting your wings in the wind just like her. Brightbill hopped onto a rock and opened his wings wide. The wind is pushing me backward. Change the angle of your wings, said his mother. Let us see what happens when they slice through the air. Brightbill slowly angled his wings downward. The more he turned them, the less the wind pushed him back. And just as his wings leveled off, Mama, look, 
He squeaked as his feet left the ground. I'm soaring, I'm soaring. He hovered there for a second, rising a little higher than before. And then he sailed backward into the soft grass again. The gosling kept hopping onto the rock and kept riding the wind and then tumbling into the grass until he started to find his wings. With each attempt, he floated a little higher and a little longer. And finally, Bright Bill really did soar. He lifted high into the air and hung there floating. He turned his wings down and felt himself drop. He wiggled his tail feathers and felt himself veering back and forth. I'm a natural, he squeaked. You are doing very well, said Ross, but you need to keep practicing. And so they spent the afternoon practicing up on the ridge. Once Bright Bill was comfortably soaring, he tried flapping his wings. He flapped high into the air. He flapped in straight lines. He flapped around in circles. A big smile appeared on his face. Clearly, Bright Bill was designed to fly. I'm flying, Mama. I'm really flying. You are flying, said the robot. Very good. Bright Bill was now a real flyer, but all that flying had him worn out. He lowered himself toward the ground and tumbled onto the grass one last time. His landing still needed some work. Roz placed Bright Bill on her shoulder and headed back to the nest. I can't believe I can fly now, Mama, said Bright Bill in a sleepy voice. I just, I just wish you could fly with me. And then the gosling's words were replaced by his quiet, steady breathing. Chapter 40, The Ship Bright Bill was a flying fanatic, and his favorite place to fly was on the grassy ridge. The robot and the gosling liked to spend afternoons up there, working on the finer points of flying. And it was on one such afternoon that they noticed something mysterious far out at sea. So if you think the last time that we heard about a ship was the very beginning of this book. Bright Bill spiraled down to his mother, flopped on the grass, and pointed to the horizon. Mama, what is that thing? Roz's computer brain found the right word. That is a ship. What's a ship? A ship is a large vessel used for ocean transport. Bright Bill's face scrunched up with confusion. Used by who? I do not know, said Roz. It was the first ship either of them had ever laid eyes on. From that distance, it looked as if they were moving slowly, but it was actually racing toward the waves. From that distance, it looked as if it were small, but it was actually one of the largest ships ever built. The robot and Gosling watched it crawl across the ocean until it finally disappeared to the south. Where had the ship come from? Where was it going? Who was on board? Roz and Bright Bill had many questions, but no answers. I want you all to think at home, where was that ship coming from? Who was on the ship? Where was it going? What do you think? If you say it loud enough, maybe I'll hear you through the video. I wish. Chapter 41, The Summer. On clear summer days, Roz, Brightbill, and Chit Chat liked to go exploring. They investigated the island's sandy southern point. They marveled at rainbows that curled up from the waterfall. They surveyed the forest from branches of tall trees. They met new friendly creatures, and sometimes they met new unfriendly creatures. But the only creatures they had to worry about were the bears. One time they came upon a bear fishing in the river, and Roz whispered, you know what to do. Bright Bill flew up and away, chit-chat chit scurried home through the treetops, and Roz melted into the landscape as only she could. Later, they met back at the nest and told the neighbors about their brush with danger. On dreary summer days, they would stay inside. Roz asked Bright Bill and Chit Chat about dreaming and about flying, about eating, and about all the things that she could not do. But the youngsters had too much energy to sit still for too long. They spent one drizzly afternoon kicking acorns around the nest. Chit Chat piled them up, and then Bright Bill swung his big foot, and the acorns went flying. The little friends chased the acorns as they bounced and rolled and spun across the floor. Then they made a new pile and kicked again. Sometimes an acorn would, be, would bounce off Roz's body, clang, and everyone would laugh and giggle together. Even Roz laughed, ha, 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 said the robot, trying to act natural. 
On clear summer evenings, they would sit outside and watch fireflies twinkle around the pond. Then they'd lie back and gaze at the dark sky. That big circle is the moon, said Chit Chat, and those little lights are called stars. And one time I tried to count them all, but I could only count up to ten, so I just kept counting to ten, over and over and over. And I have no idea how many stars there are, but I know it's more than ten. They are not all stars, said Roz. Some of them are planets. What's a planet, said Chit Chat? A planet is a celestial body orbiting a star. What does celestial mean? Celestial means something that is in outer space. What's outer space? Outer space is the universe outside the atmosphere of our planet. <sighs> What's the universe? The universe is everything and everywhere. Oh, so the universe is our island? None of them would ever really understand the universe, including Roz. Her computer brain knew only so much. She could talk about the earth and the sun, the moon and the planets, and a few stars, but not much else. Talking like chit-chat has me out of breath. The night sky was full of streaking, shimmering, and blinking lights that she simply couldn't identify. Clearly, Roz was not designed to be an astronomer. On dreary summer evenings, Roz and Brightbill would curl up together, just the two of them, and listen to the rain pattering on the roof of the nest. The robot would tell stories of annoying pine cones and terrible storms and camouflaged insects. But the sound of rain always made Bright Bill sleepy, and he'd be out before his mother could even finish a story. Last one for today, chapter 42, is called The Strange Family. It was a sweltering afternoon, and the heat put everyone in a bad mood. Roz was standing in the shade, watching her son out on the water. The other goslings were teasing him about something, when suddenly they burst into laughter. And Bright Bill turned and hurried home with a stormy expression on his face. He stomped into the garden and right past his mother without saying a word. What's wrong, Bright Bill? said Roz as she followed her son into the nest. Nothing, he squawked. Leave me alone. Tell me what is wrong. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I can help. Mama, the other goslings were making fun of me. What did they say? They called you a monster and then laughed at me for having a monster mom. They should know by now that I am not a monster. Would you like me to talk to them? No, don't do that. That'll just make things worse. The robot sat next to her son. Mama, I know you're a robot, but I don't understand what a robot is. A robot is a machine. I was not born. I was built. Who built you? I do not know. I do not remember being built. My very first memory is waking up on the northern shore of this island. Were you smaller back then, said the gosling. Nope, I have always been this size. Roz looked down at her weathered body. However, I used to be shiny like the surface of the pond. I used to stand up straighter than a tree trunk. I used to speak a different language. I have not grown bigger, but I have changed very much. The robot wanted to explain things to her son, but the truth was that she understood very little about herself. It was a mystery how she'd come to life on the rocky shore. It was a mystery why her computer brain knew certain things, but not others. She tried to answer his questions, but her answers only left him more confused. What do you mean you're not alive, squawked Bright Bill. It is true, said Roz. I am not an animal. I do not eat or breathe. I am not alive. You move and talk and think, Mama, you're definitely alive. It was impossible for such a young goose to understand technical things like computer brains and batteries and machines. The gosling was much better at understanding natural things like islands and forests and parents. Parents. The word suddenly left Bright Bill feeling uneasy. You're not my real mom, are you? There are many kinds of mothers, said the robot. Some mothers spend their whole lives caring for their young. Some lay eggs and immediately abandon them. Some care for the offspring of other mothers. I have tried to act like your mother, but no, I am not your birth mother. Do you know what happened to my birth mother? Roz told Bright Bill about that fateful day in spring, about how the rocks had fallen and only one egg survived, and how she'd put the egg in a nest and carried it away about how she'd watched over the egg until a tiny gosling hatched. Bright Bill listened carefully until she finished. Should I stop calling you mama, said the gosling. 
I will still act like your mother no matter what you call me, said the robot. I think I'll keep calling you mama. I think I will keep calling you son. We're a strange family, said Bright Bill with a little smile, but I kind of like it that way. Me too, said Roz. So, now the gosling Bright Bill kind of knows the truth, right? That Roz didn't actually like give birth to him as his birth mom, but she still is his mom because she's the one who's taking care of him and is responsible for him. So there's all different types of family structures like we learned about at the beginning of the year. So their family structure just happens to look a little bit different, right? He's kind of adopted in a way into Roz's family. So now they have a little family unit together. Coming up next time, I'll talk a little bit more about it. They're going to go visit the robot gravesite. So I don't want anybody to get freaked out because as we know, the robots aren't really alive, right? They're machines. So when we go to the robot graveyard, it's kind of just metal in the ground. But in the purposes of the story, it might freak Bright Bill out a little bit, right? Because his mom is this machine. So he's going to see them dead, even though we know they were never alive. All right. I will post your reading response number 11, and it's going to be about getting teased, right? We just saw Bright Bill got teased because of something that made him different. So I want you guys to talk about um, teasing a little bit. I'll post the question. You'll see, and I'm sure you'll have such great answers because you guys know all about how to be good and kind friends. All right. See you soon. Love you.